Hi. Hi. Okay. How are you? How are you? Very good. Thank you. Are you at your studio? I'm in my studio. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm really happy to be in conversation with um, Nora Maite. Um, she's a great artist and a good, really good friend. We've collaborated uh, for in a few projects, and I'm really happy to be today in conversation. Um, so, let's see some of your work. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I I shared this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I shared this piece. Um, it's a piece from two thousand nine. I think it's like one of the, like the first like more completed uh, pieces. I think is a representation of how my work shift. Um, at some point, uh, in in my practice in my career um, and I started more looking into uh, a space and I started looking into uh, details of architecture and like uh, a ornamentation in homes um, this is a this piece uh, this image give a little bit of the perspective so it's like a small shower where everything all the tiles the drain everything is made out of painting um, so also like thinking about like uh, painting in a more three-dimensional um, way, like painting as an object, which has been always something that interested, it interests me. Um, so kind of like the, the piece is kind of like the size, it's kind of like a, a shower for one person. And it was a shower that I remember from the first house I live in as a, as a little one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like it also like play with the scale, no? Like when I'm little, I thought that the, the shower was really big and going back, like looking at back from thinking of it like as as an older uh, as person, um, the scale shift and it become like really small. Yeah. And it, like it's kind of like like a, a portable home. I mean, yes. Yes. Like, in some ways like, for me, like when I started working in this in this way and like thinking about um, the space and home in my in my paintings in my work, I, I always thinking about like how can I take home with me, mm -hmm. and this is like a way of like taking home in in my paintings. Um, and then I share this uh this this drawing uh, that is the next one. Um, <laughs> This is like a frottage, it's, it's a robbing frottage. Frottage is like, I don't know, another name for it. Um, but it's a robbing I did in my apartment uh, that I was living before leaving Puerto Rico, that I, I was living in all San Juan. Um, so I was invited to make a uh, collaboration with artists in Chicago, and they asked me to send something, a piece, and I thought of like, um, I'm going to send my bathroom. And... <laughs> And I thought it was like a very intimate, in, you know, personal thing to send. And so I did a frottage of the whole bathroom um, and, and send that like in different papers so they can like open it um, and install it in Chicago. So that was that, was that drawing, that frottage. Yeah. And then and I have here. Yeah. These are other like uh, another series of drawings you did also in Chicago. Also in Chicago, like this is like kind of like when I was doing my MFA at the at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, this like some like some drawings I did like from memory of different like places I live in. In particular, those two, the previous one and that one, are actually two apartments I live in Chicago. Um, so kind of like drawing from memory, this floor the floor plans kind of like having a relationship to it and, and, and thinking about space and then how, how I will use that and like make it into fragments and use it in my work. Mm -hmm. So I think like those were those drawings. Yeah. And do you also do it like, like, like blindfolded or is it just like? 
Um, they're actually, I, I, I did them like, I didn't blind for myself literally, but they're mm -hmm. really like me, like with the paper and like re-entering the space by memory. So that's okay. how like I kind of I kind of started drawing, kind of like make a layout of what I think the shape of the home is. Sometimes I get surprises because I realize that I have a gap that I don't know, you know, what's in here. But of course, like it's very different, like how you experience the space and how this space is and what you remember of it. So that's that's the the, the beauty of this drawing is and like to draw from memory is that right like it's not it's not quite quite right it's uh, mm. it becomes something new yeah. so i i would draw them by memory yeah there is room for imagination um there is room for imagination and that's something that uh i've been like looking to find a way to play with that more in my work and i feel like now i i have found a better way to do it um but i think that's a beginning for me to that right like to to think uh be more like um uh, imaginative or like to draw things that uh, relate to a place but i also have like something from mm -hmm. me yeah we see the next slide um this is it's just to show since we are in the studio um <laughs> This is like to show a little bit of, of process. Um, uh, this was m making, this was in my in MFA too, where I started making the tiles and just to show like oh, everything, like all the tiles, everything is like made out of painting. So sometimes I use resin and pigment and I mix them and then I pour it and then I cut them and then I glue them into the, into the, the structure. Um, and my technique have improved through the years, I think this was at the beginning. Um, so now, now it's now it's, it's a lot. I think I, I feel more comfortable with it, and I have found better ways to make it and to work with it. Yeah. And this is. Uh, can you explain? That, that's, uh huh. The like the process. I mean, you we explain it a little bit, but like I mean, for me, knowing your work, it's like like very. And you explain, you know, drawing is very important for you and your practice. You. Yeah. But what does it make work complete? Sorry, sorry. Can can you say that again? How yeah. how how do you find or how do you, I guess, what does it what like how to? I don't know how to. No, no. I think I think you say this. Is that it caught the the signal? It. But when when is your work complete? Because I feel that sometimes you know you add more things to it or you paint um, it. Um, I think I think sometimes with the paintings I have like a. I would say that sometimes I see the painting done in my head mm -hmm. before I start, and then it changed. That that's the final. That's how the piece end up. That from the previous uh, slide. Um, that one is called Pieces from Home and it's kind of like a collage of like different places together. Um, I think I, I know it's done because it just feels complete. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I do use a drawing is a process to get there. And lately I've been like using like more like drawing as a way just to, to explore ideas just in the drawing um this is like also like to show a little bit of like the process it's like in the right side on the green um mat um it's like how i pour the resin and then i and i uh, put on top of the resin with color um some like acrylic skins that i peel off from from other things and then i cut them and i put them and it kind of like look like terrazzo tiles a little bit it's kind of like making my own terrazzo tiles mm -hmm. and then I cut that into shapes whatever shape I'm like want to work with the yeah. next one <clears throat> so this, and then this, huh? this is actually shown right now at the Museo de Puerto Rico right 
Yes, this piece is called In Between My Studio and My Old Apartment. And it's a piece I did also in grad school, by the way, in 2009. Um, so this piece is like also like very uh, special because it really like, I'm very interested in painting as an object and like painting in three dimensional. Um, and, I, and I really like like in this piece, I was able to play with the color and like, I, I call it like the color that don't exist a little bit like in connection to uh, maybe some of the pieces from Donald Judd where he like have the color coming through the plexiglass and it paints the wall. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is uh, so poetic. And it also talks about the space that you inhabit, but you don't see and which is me the memory. Um, for me, so so the reflection that you, you can see um, in another slide that we're gonna share um you can you will see the the reflection on the wall mm -hmm. and this the shape of the shape of the of that piece it can come from the studio i had in grad school so i framed the studio with these pieces of wood that was painted and had the reflection and then when i did that piece which was a very like exploratory uh, exercise um I decided to cut it, uh, to paint it with the reference to the tiles from my old apartment in Puerto Rico and then prompt it to the wall. This is from an exhibition that I had in Puerto Rico in 2018, which actually was curated by you, <laughs> um, that you yeah. proposed to, to the space Hidrante, that the director is Jose Lopez Serra. And so in this piece, in this exhibition, we exhibit some of the frottage, mm -hmm. some rubbings I did in the apartment I was, I was, I actually live now with some paintings that re reference other spaces. And something I that I felt a little bit about this project or this exhibition was that I mean, it's, it's very interesting the way that everything is placed also because this gallery space is an apartment <laughs> and mm -hmm. a very special place, very nice, uh, like very experimental uh, things happen mm -hmm. there. So, yeah. Uh, one of the most important places in Puerto Rico um, right now. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think it was very nice and the way that everything was laid out. Um, mm -hmm. and we see so people can and it really there's another image that mm -hmm. after the next yeah um there's the other robin is having a relationship like the robin has a part of the molding that i have in the wall of my apartment with the radiator and then in the installation here it continue with the miami miami um window and that is yeah. like for me this this space was like so perfect because when I'm thinking of my work and when I'm, when I'm thinking what I'm selecting from the home or from the space to work with, those are the things that I'm thinking, like those type of relationships that sometimes are kind of like disjointed, but then they come together. Um, and I think that what, I, I don't know, in some way that's what an artist should do, no? Like, like kind of like bring a new perspective to something and invite the viewer to see something in another way, in a new way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, that's, I, I love, I was so happy with this show at Hidrante. Um, there's another slide of the, this piece, this, the space, as Natalia mentioned, is an apart, it was an apartment that is, became a gallery. Um, and it had a kitchen and, and I loved it because it had the tiles in the kitchen and it just, it just was like a perfect, you know, space. Um, so this space, this painting is called um, Concreto Necklace. And it's kind of like, like thinking, you know, like I took a part of the fence or, you know, a part of the wall with the concrete ornamental blocks and I make it, made in a necklace kind of like to hang in the, in, in the space too, in the home. And, and it's kind of like, again, I'm always like thinking of like fragments of, of places and like when you think about ruins we I mean I'm gonna say we but not necessarily not maybe not everyone like it but for me like 
But I, I think what I like about a ruin is like the beauty of the fragment that tell me part of the story of what that was. And mm -hmm. I can like depart from there or I can look into it more. And and what can be, you know, what is that what what it can say now, like what what is how it continues to to live. So I think in that way I like to work with different fragments. Um yeah the space uh this one is called uh sol trunco and it's exactly it's 30 inches exactly the size of like it fits perfectly on top of a, of a door um and in some way for me was they like, kind of like bring here uh sol trunco from puerto rico <laughs> into <laughs> the space i actually have it in my home in uh, on top of, of a door um and i think i need to keep it <laughs> forever because i feel like i cannot live without without a piece yeah um, yeah um so can we go to the next ones this is also uh, this, right yes this is right now up in an exhibition in brooklyn um you can find if you're interested to go and you're in New York, um, the exhibition uh, is called What is Real? And the Instagram is called The Real House. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a group exhibition and all the works in some way relate of like questioning like what is real, what is a fact, um, and how that, do that play into a new, new stories? And this, I, I made a frotage, I have made some frotages of doors and they place it in front of another door, which I thought was like so perfect because it kind of like mirror, yeah, mirror the real door looking at the print of the door kind of um, in a more like um, goes kind of like a go the goals of a door is in the space and it kind of like relate to other. Uh, it yeah. can relate to any any other place, yeah. And I love I love that the scale that you're working on. We'll talk about that later. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this possibility to have a studio is very important for your practice. The way yeah, you manage to like you know work with different types of like, different skills, and now you're doing like more like huge work in like, thinking about culture. But we'll talk. Yeah. Um, so the the next slide is a video. I don't know if we're gonna be able to. It's uh, it's a it's a time lapse that a friend did. Yeah. It doesn't look very well, right? Of course, we're we're doing a lot with Instagram Live, <laughs> but it, it was me doing a frotage of um, again thinking of like how I can use my imagination and like my 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 own uh, relationship with space and 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 shapes. So I kind of like created a fake floor here and edit and, and intervene in it in those tiles. And then I did a frottage, which is the next, the next, and I'm creating shapes with textures that kind of relate to walls. And that's how, that's like kind of like how the, that frottage came out. And then now um, basically that's where the painting is going. So oh, wow. that one now is blue. Wow. It's not finished. So I'm, I'm still working on it. Um, but that's like kind of like making the frutage. I just wanted to share that. And then the next, the next slide is also a piece in the real house um, that is in in this exhibition in Brooklyn. Um, it's a dresser. I did a I did a frutage of my dresser, and then on the sides, I'm like like thinking of like the dresser is this piece of furniture that kind of represent. Um, they present your history of moving and your things and your belongings and belonging. And the weight of a dresser is like this heavy like furniture in the same way like what you when you go through life you kind of carry this like baggage and like and like moving like mm -hmm. the, just thinking of like having to move the furniture from place to place and 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 what do that means and also like the fact of like also losing everything. So I think it's like, it comes in, in this piece. 
and mm -hmm. this is how I did the frottage. I, I put the fabric on the on the dresser, and then I frottage. I, I did the rubbing of it, um, and and then I take and I stretch it, and then I paint it. <clears throat> and do you think about this as like sculpture? Thing? I I definitely think of them as a sculpture. Like I, for me. I think of them as painting all the time, but also a sculpture. Like for me, like in my work, my paintings, I feel like you're not going in into the window, into the image of this painting. You kind of like the painting is coming out of the wall. It's like, it's like instead of like creating a portal to go in, I create a portal to for something from the other side to come into this plane. So I feel like... Um, I see them, I, I want them to feel very sculptural and I want them to feel very um, tactile. Like I, I feel like that makes the viewer in some way very present with the work. I mean, that's my, my I think, I don't know if it happened, but I, I, that's my, a little bit of my intention. I think this one is a good for that. Yeah. Is that one is from 2019. It was in an exhibition at Fresh Window Gallery, a gallery in Brooklyn, um, that I had a solo show in 2009. The gallery is not open anymore, but they continue with the Instagram and promoting other artists and like, so you can go and follow them there too. Um, this one is called uh, my lo looking at my neighbors yard and for me it's like the viewer is in the this side of the fence and you're looking into the the yard of your your neighbor right like you're like peeking into it and for me it's just like in the moment i was like making it i was like thinking of the this idea that you kind of like always every time you look to the side the the, the grass kind of look greener mm -hmm. in the other side and you forget to see that you know stop looking to the other side and like how green just look at, at the beautiful fence that you have um but also I was like thinking like a little bit it's like this I mean coming from Puerto Rico and this relationship of like kind of being in Puerto Rico and and we looking at the United States like, oh, the grass is greener there than here. And it's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's, you know, like, like the neighbor also had its own trouble. Like everyone has its own story. And, but I think, you know, if we, we're not gonna go into this, like the mind of the colonized um, but it it kind of like touched a little bit um, on on that in in any in a in a in a way I would say yeah um, yeah that's that's one painting of a one of the it's called um, Ojo del Mar Eye of the Sea kind of like through the concrete block you kind of looking at the water which is something that interesting me like. Always, I think, in coming from an island, like there is this thing of like being surrounded by water. So there's like this desire to look at the horizon and to wonder, and and the sea. I think is very important to to many of 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 us artists. Um, anyone who kind of grew grew up next to water, I think water in some way is present in the work. So. Mm -hmm. and, many, and that's many. like the, in the exhibition. That's like kind of like how I, ins I install it. A little bit off, um, like very tall on the wall. That's pretty. Um, and this is a piece, like again, like thinking of like I really see my work as a collage, and like how I like mix things and mix different patterns and different places, and and I've been like doing these paintings where I like really am like me sometimes like framing the painting with the tiles or the or the paint. Um, it makes me think of rooms like as some when I'm doing that I'm thinking of like a living room or a room or a, I don't know a part of the house and this one is oh. called full moon in this in the sun room so again like I've been 
started like thinking of like the window and looking at the moon and kind of like having this like thoughts about like you know earth our home and I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and it's something that I explore more in, in recent work. The same, the same with this one is called um, the dance room. I think I am not a hundred percent right now, but I think it's called the it's a dance room. Mm -hmm. The same. I, I'm thinking of like a living room and things happening. Um, and all of this one is called this year also when you got that new studio. Or which one uh, are these only this these are kind of like before the pandemic i would say before that this is like 2019 um this what is called somos mass and for me it's kind of like uh it makes reference to the protests uh, that happened in puerto rico in the summer 2019 where like everyone like came together asking the governor to resign Mm -hmm. which is will be another topic right now but um it, everyone was the most the most like we are more and we're not afraid mm -hmm. um and for me like these shapes in the space are um are like people marching so together so you kind of like see the front row always and then it's like everyone that follow Mm -hmm. it's a more like it's um it's like very abstracted and and i i would say like maybe in 20 years somebody can have a different a, a different uh interpretation of that painting but i'm sharing here kind of where it came from in that moment yeah and uh this one is called a uh, sunset i think tell me tell me no that you you also you're like adding jewelry one so is yeah. that a, like when do you decide to add jewelry to the works or... to the work um i always made jewelry before um kind of like as a side thing and i pursue it a little bit more seriously when i when i graduate from from grad school but um but also i think my um, being in the department of the fiber and material studies were like there's a lot of like conversation about craft and labor um, and how those things can also have a fine art um, uh, value, right? Um, how, how, can, how the craft can become, uh, it's also art. Um, so I think my experience going through, through grad school in that department, it kind of like allowed me to not think of like my jewelry making as a disjointed, or like completely separate or world of my making, my art making, and and in some way kind of like I can embrace it and integrate it. Um, and I realized that the, in, the, the, the things that I'm interested in the space specifically, the ornamentation of the space is basically the jewelry of the space. So yeah. like if I, if I think of like the, the pipes, the, the the fixtures of the lights, the the the, the doorknob, like uh, the space has so much and I mean, so much detail that give some sort of character. The the or I don't know the, the lines, the designs, the, the tiles that you pick, the counter that you pick for the kitchen. All that is ornamentation of the space. All that is like a way of claiming it and a way of like make it yours and I feel, I feel like that's in some ways the same thing that we do with jewelry in our body mm -hmm. and we kind of like want to define an, our image or like uh, give the, uh, the, co the core or, or, or embrace like our character in some in some way you know um, and uh, I, I think that's, that also happened in the body of, of, of the home and the body of architecture, if you think of it. And I started like to add it into my work. So it's kind of like the jewelry in, of the painting. Sometimes I think of them like in this painting, the chains go on the sides of the painting. And I think of them, they are like um, these earrings of the painting. Um, so 
um so yeah oh, in some in some way it's it's kind of like i wanted to add that it's kind of like leaving surprises here and there because i i never like i mean i'm always going to find in the work you know like some hidden mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. and that's very special and i wanted to show something let me just flip the camera this is not in the slide but this example of uh -huh. one of your, oh yeah 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 one of your exhibitions and also i wanted to yeah. share let me see okay so here's one of the frutas and then there's like that mm -hmm. little uh side specific Thanks. yeah <laughs> yeah and, and and thank you for bringing this out this is like me these are these projects i did in chicago um where i will fill fill in gaps in 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 a space that i was invited to exhibit and i would like use like uh play-doh and jewelry and rhinestones and i would like people who like friends will give me jewelry that they don't want anymore sometimes i i bought some extra and i'm like break it and then i'm like oh that's sarah is like mm -hmm. um commenting here actually sarah invited me uh sarah Wilmes here from 80 musings um she invited me to to show uh in a in 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 a, in a group show in Chicago and and I did that to the space I kind of like look for gaps and and cracks and I fill them up with jewelry um I would love to do that again as a, one time if any you know like be invited to do that again that would that will be cool um so yeah I, in some way I I I do that sometimes in my paintings yeah no, I just wanted yeah. to ask you're like, yeah, thank you. And with your practice, so it's uh, very, very nice uh, integration. <laughs> so, can we see the next slide? Let me see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this one again, like playing with it, like kind of creating, putting things on the table or, or something, and then I, I will like with shapes and textures, and then I will do the, the rubbing. And then I stretch the canvas, and then I paint on it on top of that. And this one is kind of like, um, kind of the abstraction of a floor plan. Again, it's for me, it's kind of like a room. It's called the red room. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, you know, like the texture and the, how I treat the frame. What is you know, uh, the colorful parts. Um, it's kind of like thinking of terrazzo tiles, thinking of mosaic, thinking of like texture you can find in the garden or something. So, um, yeah, it has a lot of movement. Also, I mean the door, like the way the door opens, or I mean, at least that's my image. Of, of no, this. no, that that's that's exactly. I actually repeat. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my interest is in the doors. But and I, re I, I, you know, when you draw in a floor plan or architects, um, uh, a blueprint will draw like whatever is a door. They put this shape right in the in the in the drawing. Um, so thus, I started using that shape a lot in my work, and you will see it in some other pieces how I repeated it and play with it. Kind of like again, like trying to bring my imagination and like depart from something, you know. Um, yeah. So the next slide. So this is like a very new painting um, that I finished, I think it was this year. It's called Somos Espejo. And I've been like, since the pandemic and uh, there's, the drawings are coming after, um, I started, I, I, a little bit before I started like working with this leaf, the, the snake plant. Um, the snake plant, hola mami. <laughs> the, the, the snake plant in Puerto Rico is called Lengua de Vaca, I think. Um, this this mm -hmm. plant, but it's a plant that you have a lot at home. Yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. interior plant, but you, you can find it outside too. Um, it's just the air. Also. I mean, that's what my mom says. I don't know. And I also like being told like it's, it's, it's given or like you should have a lot because it brings like prosperity. Like mm -hmm. me, like thinking of amulets and like good luck and, and good vibes and things. So 
I started in the pandemic. I started like, um, I said in the pandemic, but in the, you know, this time that we were in the lockdown, um, that I, that I, I was drawing a lot, um, explore like how I can use this, this, uh, image, this shape of the leaf, kind of like a vessel for me to play and to kind of like bring other emotions and like to to be more uh, playful in the in the in the painting and it kind of like a way to represent me maybe or or humans or like more like human part in the in the paintings um so this one is like i didn't think of 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 a mirror when i when i started um i did the draw i did a sketch i kind of went into it um and when i was like close to finish, I realized that the leaf, they maybe are two leaves that are kissing each other, or maybe they are looking at each other, you know, they're, look, they are, they're looking at each other, but also it, it could be the reflection of, of the leaf um, mirroring itself uh, in the space. So I, I, I let it be, you know. I was like interested in, in in it. I think you got frozen. Um, maybe we can um, go to the next slide. Let's see. Uh, this one is called the air that we breathe, and I also I did it last last summer um, in 2020, and it's also um, a kind of like an image of uh, of the marsh and representing all the marsh that happened in the summer of 2020 in New York and around the world. I think you're a little bit uh, frozen, Natalia. Gracias, Namibia. <laughs> Thank you for that message. Um, this one is called Armonia. <clears throat> and again, it's like playing around, like using the, the leaves, like kind of like to uh, occupy or inhabit the space of the painting. <clears throat> and this one is a... This is, is a diptych, it's two, two pieces, one um, is called El Sol, La Luna, and Us. You're back? <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Melissa. Um, so this, this, these two paintings uh, is the sun and then the, the next one that is the moon, uh, they, the the intention and, and and my idea with this painting is that they both once they're installed in an exhibition they both will mirror each other um and the viewer will be placed in the mirror in between and for me it's like thinking positioning us as kind of like make us very make us very conscious of like our position um as earth you know like kind of like we we all together are 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 in between the moon and the sun and and they relate to each of us um so in some way like we are all important in the same way you are important so that was like my thoughts with this this piece um let me see the next one and then here um, I'm sharing like some of the words that uh, I, I started this, this drawing. I did it at the beginning of the lockdown last year, kind of like I think it was between March and April. Um, it's called The Nights Are Longer. And I think um, this is like where I started, like how can I use this like motif and this leaf to express all the things so allow myself to be a little bit uh maybe go into a uh, territory of landscape in some way um but a lot of one of the things that i was like i think we all did is like going for long walks at night and i had a dog 
in that time and we had to walk her every night. Um, so we we went for some walks and and the streets were like very empty. Um, so there was maybe a little bit now. So there was the, there was a. Can you hear me? So there was. I'm just gonna keep going a little bit until, until Natalia can come back. Um, so there was long. I, it was it, it was like very quiet walks, I think, and and I I that's what I wanted. Um, thank you. Um, I think that's what I wanted to express in this in, in this painting. Is like um, there was like a stillness and like um, whoa, I'm very big now. Um, there was like a stillness and and quietness and like a moment of reflection. And I think in the the these drawings drawings that I did last year and at the beginning of this year, um, I think it has like opened a door for me to express a little bit more um, things that are more inti intimate uh, or more personal. But I think that they relate to everyone and, and, and we all have lived a very specific um, time in our lives that it touched the whole, the whole world. And um, I hope I hope in some way this this work this works like touch on that. Maybe we can go to the other slide. So I have a, an exhibition that opened last week um, uh, with Embajada Gallery. They are a gallery in Puerto Rico, but they started a project on on 2020 with the pandemic at their apartment at the foyer. So it's kind of more of a viewing room but they could be available for seeing by appointment if you contact Embajada. Um, so the show is called uh, Deep Blue Day, Bright Pink Night. That's also the title of this drawing. And for me, they're very, they're a little bit, they're more, abs they're more abstract in a way of like, um, I think they come, a lot of it come more from imagination like again, I said I was like trying to to open myself a little bit more, and this painting specifically is half like the new moon with the full moon, and like thinking of the time of that cycle and how these cycles affect us um, in our life. It affects nature. It also affects us. But also to think of like you know this this repetition and cycle that you know from bo being born and 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 there and dying and and uh, different phases that you go through life and I I think in some way that is like uh, what I wanted to express. Um, kind of work with in these paintings and and again you can see the shape the two shapes of the doors that are like interlocking um so just like to think of like you can see how like i'm playing with these like elements and motif uh, through the work um and then thinking of the leaves i just feel like the leaves are looking for the center and I mean, I can get very poetic and talk about it from my, but I want people to have their own experience with it. But in some way, like having the moon and and the the cycle of the moon pulling nature and pulling water and dictating cycles, um, it's kind of like nature, like kind of like is aiming to reach the moon. And I think we all, in some way. I think we look at the moon in some way, kind of like with a desire of like reaching to it. Yeah. The next one, the next uh, drawing is called Gala. And Gala was um, my dog uh, that passed away recently. I was, I think, well, yeah, it was in March. And I started this drawing before she passed away and I came back to it to finish it when when she left and mm -hmm. I don't want to get emotional but um 
Galau was amazing. I, I, th I think the drawing was about her a little bit. And I think, yeah. um, again, it's like this cycle, this like uh, duality, you know, the black and white, thinking mm -hmm. of the yin, the yin and the yang, um, the good and evil, like there's like a thinking of like, there's like a reason mm -hmm. for this movement. And I feel like it was like, kind of like passing from one plane to the other. Yeah. Know, it's very, yeah. Um, but that, I mean, I have to say, Gala lived a very happy life and she was loved by a lot of people. Thank you. She's like, she was like 16 years old or something. Yeah, yeah, she was. She yeah. was, she was, she gave us a lot. Yeah. Um, and then this one is called the next one. And these are all drawings that are part of the exhibition at Emahara. Mm -hmm. um, this one is called uh, Silver Lining. And <clears throat> I've been doing many sketches and many drawings where I, like, I'm putting like a line in between, kind of dividing the space. Um, so I play with it in, the, in this drawing and I put like the terrazzo tiles in each corner. Um, Again, black and white, like thinking again of like this like um, idea of balance and the texture that is behind where, where the leaf, the red leaf is floating. What are the materials you're using for it? It's color pencil mm -hmm. on paper, just color pencil on paper, on paper. And I work on paper that already has color. That's very important. I think that really helps of why the colors are so vibrant. Um, mm -hmm. I'm saturated. Um, so the texture that is, that the leaf is floating, I created a, let me, let me look at it. I can also zoom it in. So you can see. So this is the texture of the work, but you actually have it. Yeah. I so I created like something like with a with a texture. I created like a texture, and then I put the 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 fab the fabric, the paper on top of this, in that area. So I just frotage with the color pencil bar, uh, only on the area that I wanted, and that's how I got that texture there. Um, and then I have done it like for other paintings. I kind of like create. Mm -hmm like these textures that then I will frotage then with the fabric. Um, and then the next one, the next one is called the Ocaso and it makes reference to, oh, thank you, Embajada. Yes, contact Embajada, they're right there. <laughs> to, see the, to see the paintings uh, or um, the drawings. Um, El Ocaso, it makes reference to that painting that I showed before of looking at my neighbor's yard. yard. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to play with that image again, because again, if you look at it, um, it's kind of like a yin yang you, you, where the blocks are, uh, it's the white part. And with the, the landscape, the forest or the grass is, is like more dark. Um, and at the end, uh, all the way on the top, it has a moon. And it make me think of this is the twilight zone. So, um, and I added the moon. I, I, my plan with this drawing at the beginning was to cut it exactly where the blue line starts on the top. And then I decided that this, this image need a balance in this area. And I think it needs a moon. So I gave it, I gave it a moon <laughs> to the drawing. Um, yeah, that's, that's so, El, El Ocaso. And then uh, this one is called Transitional Land. And again, it's my interpretation of the yin, yang, the yin and the yang. And, and the shapes, they kind of re make reference to those other paintings I did about people marching. So I think it's like thinking of, there's always two perspectives of something. There's always two ways of seeing it. So what is the what is right or what is true? You know, it depends from where are you from where you are is standing, 
and um i kind of like was thinking of you know like in some way sometimes solution is like finding a balance and i mean it's always should it's kind of always is but but also like the title um transitional land it also the drawing also make me think of like i was listening to the podcast la brega which is a podcast that tell a little bit the story of of a part of you know part of the story of Puerto Rico and our relationship to the United States um and our history and they someone described like Puerto Rico for this person was like a transitional land and i i it just blew my mind the way that she you know when she said that and it kind of like make me think of like we always feel like a, in a, in a limbo like there's no like a specific definition for us and it's kind of like we're always living in between two worlds in between two id in you know in, in without a specific like a concrete idea of of what the future can entail and it's been di dictated to us um so i felt like I, I just felt like this, I was listening to this and these ideas, I felt them very in the drawing. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, we have a, actually, that uh -huh. um, so someone asked um, about your experience as a migrant and uh -huh. impacts your work. Uh -huh. um, and are there some the choices of colors. Um, okay, about it. Someone asked about her about your experience as a migrant and how uh, themes, color choices, methods, etc. Okay. Um, definitely. Um, I'm gonna say like my work definitely changed when I left Puerto Rico, and and I think is. It's something that you know. I'm glad it happened, and I think it. I think when you grew up in a place more in an island, that's that's your world, and that's your like periphery. And when you leave, you're able to see it from the outside. And I think um, also when you leave home and and you're out, you you miss it. You you see it in a different way. And I became started to become more conscious of that. Sometimes when you are in a place, you take some things for from granted, and it doesn't. You don't have to leave to have to understand the value of it or to see it. But when you definitely leave, you definitely see it. And I, I think I started to look up, up, up about my interest in home and the idea of home, my my, my interest in space. It kind of can kind of like it started to show. Definitely, when I left Puerto Rico, and 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 I think um, it also make me uh, aware that, oh, you know, like in the United States, I wasn't considered like American, but I'm American. But it, but it's but at the same time, it's like um, you are also an immigrant, but the immigrants don't let you be an immigrant. <laughs> so, um, it 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 definitely like. Um, it put you in a position like uh, to see like many other perspectives that sometimes I, maybe I wasn't aware I was interested to work with. Um, and also like my work, my interest in space, it also comes like at me, like I, through my life, and, and this was in Puerto Rico, it's just when I left, I started thinking of it. But these experiences coming came from me living in Puerto Rico and like for me like growing up and like moving into different you know like every year I will live in a new home um, from different reasons what I'm not gonna go through here um, but it's it's kind of like what for me and 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 it's important and I grew I, I grew make me grow really fast um, mm -hmm. I mature really fast and 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 I think. I reflect on it once I left Puerto Rico and yeah. I started like to work on that in my work. And, and for me, this, my work is like this desire to really like, um, have a sense of belonging. And that's what I say, like reclaiming the space and like, um, 
sometimes someone that moves a lot and it doesn't have like an anchor, um, it find a way. We just just you just find a way to to find anchor on your own way. And and for me, I just wanted to bring home with me, kind of like in my pocket, and in some way, it was in my in my paintings. So that's yeah. kind of. Cool. And I we have like kids and also as an but I wanted something about the future of works. Um, the future? Of these works, because these are like... Tough, tough, yeah. Yeah, and um, can we see the drawing of the totem? Yeah. Are these related to the type of, or some, you know, related to spiritual Um and also connected to the last that we saw that mm -hmm. like, spirituality and all of these things um i think so with this like totems i've been like i've been like working with some like uh making some very small sculptures like here that i have in my studio and i my work is really very very collage like i feel like if somebody is somebody like make a research about my work and like look back through the years and now and they will find that my work is is a mix it's a collage it's like putting things on top of the other and like things are they don't seem to come together they like impose i impose them to be together and have a relationship and i think in some way this i have like a desire to make like some more to make a, these sculptures and I I thought of the idea of the totem um, kind of like having a more like amulet and like a spiritual way of relationship to him but also I think it's basically making a collage a vertical collage instead of like putting top things on top of the other I'm like reaching out to the top kind of like thinking of columns Mm -hmm. and and <laughs> pillars and and pillars and i feel like these totems will be kind of like vertical collages yeah know. we'll go back to the to the size of the so these are like i don't know eight they're like they're like eight feet eight feet mm -hmm. and a half um i think i want them I want them to be tall. I would like, to, but all depends on what space, you know, I, I'm going to make them to show them. Um, so I'm working of, I'm working them in, in, in sections. Also mm -hmm. like thinking of like, well, if I chip them and how this thing is going to be moved. So I want to think about those things because then you regret when you didn't think of them, those, those yeah. things before. Um, yeah. So this this is like I just got this last week uh, in my studio. It's all white right now, but it's gonna it's gonna be painted. <laughs> and I think I think I'm gonna work also with the reflection uh, on the wall of with the color reflection. Which means I'm showing. Or I definitely want to make things like like this this type of sculptures and show them. Okay, and show them outdoors. That's the, yeah. I hope I hope it can happen. Yeah, at some point. Um, I would love to because I feel like I would like to be outside in the landscape. In a in a garden, like, you know? in a garden or something. And I <laughs> I think the paintings already are already talking about gardens. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Let's like. <laughs> Not gonna work. Not gonna work. Not gonna work. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much for your time. I'm so sorry that I like leave for a few seconds. Because no, no worries. But thank you so much. And thank go you. And work. If you're in Puerto Rico, go see Nora's work. If you're in New York, go see Nora's work.